eye. I got in the eye. I'm so sorry, Laura. I can't see. I can't see. I can't see. Oh my god, I can't see. Right. You are going to get it at the end of this. Okay, and um, Josh, name any CBBC show. Pet Factor. The Pet Factor is it? Pie yourself. You're so annoying, you boys. I'm so annoying. More for you. More for you, Josh. Thank you very much for coming back on. Have a lovely summer. It's been great finally speaking to you. Right now, it's time for Horrible Industries. Glory Games. <laughs> Next left driver. Rattus, I am not your chauffeur. Don't talk to the talent driver. I am not your driver. Well, how come I'm in the back ordering you around and you're in the front driving? Because your feet can't reach the pedals. We're just carpooling to save the environment. Cut down on emissions. <laughs> and that's not helping. Next right driver. <laughs> Ugh, give me strength. Hello and welcome to Gory Games. With the star of the show, me, Rattus Rattus, and his ex-chauffeur, Dave Lamb. Ex-chauffeur? Yeah, you're fired. You can't fire me, I don't work for you. Not anymore, you don't, you're fired. <laughs> Let's meet today's horrible historians. Hi, I'm Paris and I'm from Windsor. <laughs> Hi, I'm Keaton and I'm from Liverpool. <laughs> Hi, I'm Zainab and I'm from London. <laughs> Welcome. Everyone, you lot are playing to win Year Spheres. The person with the highest year score at the end of the show will win a terrible prize fished out of the time sewer by the even more terrible Rattus Rattus. Just cos I fired you. He simply didn't. <laughs> Time to crack on with round one. Let's find out what it's about by going over to the gory grid. It's the Rotten Romans. So, four questions on the Rotten Romans coming up. The person who gets the most right wins the first year sphere. And your four Roman topics are... Banquets, Caligula, Catapults and Toilets. <laughs> so, Paris, you get to pick first this round. What are you going to go for? I'm going to go for Toilets, please. Toilets. <laughs> and you won't be surprised to hear that that is a question from Rattus Rattus. It certainly is. True or false? Roman public toilets didn't have cubicles, so everyone had to do their business sitting next to each other. <laughs> is that true or is that false? Show me now, please. <laughs> wow, everybody has gone for true. What's the answer, Rattus? It's true! Yeah, they would even share the same sponge on a stick to wipe their bottoms. I would never share a pooey sponge on a stick. Now, good for you, Rattus. <laughs> yeah, I'd eat it all myself. <laughs> That's a point apiece. What a cracking start. Superb. Keaton, pick us a uh, topic. Can I go for banquets, please? True or false? At banquets in ancient Rome, slaves would crawl around the floor mopping up the guests' vomit. Is that true or is that false? Let's see. Wow, Keaton and Zainab both think it's false. Paris thinks that's true. What's the answer, please? It's true. I mean, you'd have to be sick between courses so you could eat more, meaning there was plenty of sick for those slaves to clear up. Oh, talk about a dream job! Hey, Dave, you should apply. Now I've sacked you as my driver. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Let's give a point to Paris, shall we? There we go. Fabulous. OK, Zainab, your turn. Caligula, please. Caligula it is. Let's hear that question. True or false? Caligula once got so bored at a gladiator games that he ordered his guards to throw a section of the audience into the arena to be eaten alive by a wild animal. Is that true or is that false? Let's see. <laughs> wow. Paris and Keaton think it's true. Zainab thinks that's false. What's the answer? It's true. So on the bright side, they did get an excellent view of the games. Well played, Paris and Keaton. A point apiece. There is one question left in this round, and it is a question on catapults. True or false? When the Roman army ran out of ropes for their catapults, they used rat tails knotted together. 
don't you worry, Taylor. It was a long time ago. Is that true or is that false? <laughs> Zainab and Keaton agreeing this time, both thinking it's false. Harris has gone for true. What's the answer? It's false. <laughs> but they did sometimes use women's hair. Phew, you're all right, Taylor. You're all right. I'm sure we're all delighted for Taylor, but I'll tell you who is delighted, Keaton and Zainab. They get a point each there. And look at that. At the end of the round, we have a tiebreaker situation. Zainab, just for the moment, you are history. Keaton and Paris, you're going head-to-head -head for the first year sphere. Beginning with the letter L, what were the wild animals in the Roman arena to which Christians were often fed? Keaton. Lions. Lions is correct. Congratulations, Keith. Yes. You have won the first year's here. Excellent work. And that means it's time for me to say... All hail the potty! Keith, yeah. help yourself to the first year's here. Choose wisely because AD dates will be added to your total score, but BC dates will, of course, be subtracted. We'll find out what's in there later on. Now... Winning the Roman quiz means that Keaton is automatically through to play the Roman game. But will he be alone or will everybody get to play? Let's find out, shall we? <laughs> it's a single-player game. Off you go down the time sewer, Keaton. Good luck. Ugh. Oh, I'm going to vomit. <laughs> The year is 31 BC, and the Roman Empire is at war with itself. <laughs> Octavian and Mark Antony are going head to head for the ultimate victory. Yes, it's time to play the Battle of Actium. You are on Octavian's side. Use your catapult to sink Mark Antony's ships. One point for hitting a ship, two points if it's Mark Antony's blue ship. Score five points to win a year sphere. On my command. Three, two, one, unleash hell! And that's exactly what Keaton's going to do. He loads the catapult. I don't like catapults. What if it contain the word cat? Well, no, it's a fair point. He's having a miss there to start, a second miss. Well, is he going to hit at all, Ratters? Oh, oh yes, yes, he is! And that was Mark Antony's ship, so he starts off with two points, lovely. There's a third. Ratters is flying now, isn't he? He certainly is. I'm willing him on. Well, well done, and it's making a difference. That's four points already, and here comes Trevor the Seagull. Trevor always tries to defend Mark Antony's fleet, but he's got nowhere there. Keaton has done it! What a seafaring genius. How did that feel? It, the game is fun and exciting. It was really difficult at first, but once going into the hang of it, it was amazing. I bet that Seagull was a high point. When the seagull came in, it was really annoying, so I got distracted a lot. Hello, Keaton! Got any chips for me? Congratulations, Keaton. Superb ship sinking. Help yourself to another year's fit. That is... What are you doing? I'm writing an ad. Wanted new driver for hugely successful rat. <laughs> Must be better than my current one, which won't be... Difficult. <laughs> that is going straight down the time sewer. Oh. Not that I was ever your driver. <laughs> On to round two, and to find out what's up next, it's over to that most goriest of all grids. It's the measly Middle Ages. And here are your all important Middle Ages topics Monks, Charles the Sixth. Robert of Artois and Richard III. So, Keaton, it is your turn to pick a topic first. Can I go for monks, please? Bald monks sometimes added cheeky images to religious manuscripts they were illustrating. The Rutland Psalter features a demon firing an arrow into what? A. A merman's bottom. Oh! B. A dragon's bottom. C. A sphinx's bottom. Show me now, please. <laughs> Ooh, they've all gone for B. Every one of them thinks it's a dragon's bottom. What's the answer? The answer is A. <laughs> the monk drew a demon firing an arrow into a merman's bottom. Naughty monkey. And if you don't believe us, here it is. 
I bet when they saw that, all the other monks broke their vow of silence. <laughs> <laughs> Zainab, your turn to pick a topic. Um, can I have Richard the Third, please? Richard the Third, you certainly mm. can, and that is a prop question. Prop question, prop question, prop question, prop question. That is a human bone. In 2012, the bones of King Richard III were discovered in Leicester, but where exactly? Was it A, under a car park, B, in a rubbish tip, or C, beneath a cricket pitch? All answer now, please. Oh, they've all gone for A, and they are all correct. Of course, Richard III's bones were dug up in a Leicester car park. My mate Trevor's body was found in a Leicester car park. <laughs> On a wheel. He was a hedgehog. Sad. <laughs> and if you're a hedgehog and have been affected by any of the issues in today's programme, then bad luck. <laughs> <laughs> a point for everyone. Smashing stuff. Paris, it's your go to pick a topic. Please may I have Robert of Artois? That is a question from Rattus Rattus. Good choice. The French Count Robert of Artois was a real prankster. But which of these was not one of his pranks? Was it A, a hidden hosepipe to squirt water at ladies' dresses, B, a spitting statue, or C, a pile of slippery fox poo left on the floor? Show me those answers now, please. <laughs> Every man jack of them has gone for C. Rattus, what's the answer? Well, the answer is indeed C! Yes, the pile of slippery fox poo left on the floor wasn't one of Robert Artois's pranks. No, indeed. <laughs> oh, although it is one of mine. <laughs> <laughs> very, very amusing, Rattus. Another absolutely smashing joke. That's a point apiece. That leaves us with one question remaining, and it's a question on Charles VI. Middle Ages French King Charles VI lost the plot and started to think he was made of glass. Doctors tried to treat him by doing what? A. Jumping out at him to surprise him. <laughs> B. Covering him in fox grease. Or C. Making him swim in a pool of fish eyeballs. Show me your answers now, please. Oh, that's divided them. The girls think it's B. Keaton thinks it's C. What's the answer? The answer is A. Oh. The doctors jumped out at Charles VI, thinking the shock would cure him. Hey, Rattus, Rattus. I bet he was shattered. <laughs> Thought he was made of glass. <laughs> Never mind. OK, at the end of that round, it's a three-way tie, and we all know what that means. It's a tiebreaker situation. <gasps> Beginning with the letter C, this piece of siege equipment would be used to hurl stones at castles. Zainab. Catapult. Catapult is absolutely right. Congratulations, Zainab. Help yourself to a year's fee. There we go. I wonder what's in there. OK, Zainab, you are through to play the Middle Ages game, but will it be just you or will the others get to play too? Let's find out. It's an all-play game! Yes! Come on! Yes. So it's down the time sewer so with a lot of you. Off you go. Lead them on. That was particularly stinky. Now, this is a game where we train you to become a knight in slightly less than the usual 14 years. You've got two minutes. Let's play... Not a lot. This skill is called running the rings. You have to tear through the course, hooking one ring at a time and dumping it back in your basket. The first person to collect five rings wins the year sphere. Three, two, one. <laughs> and they're away, and Keaton has gone off like an express train, but I don't think, Rattus, <laughs> he's actually grabbed a ring. I think he's missing the hoop. He's forgotten the hoop, or maybe he's planning to get it at the end. Yes, this is tactics, this Rattus. Look, there he is. He's started oh. back to front. Crafty. But it's worked for him. Look at that. One point already. And then Paris levels it up. And then Zainab makes it a three-way tie. Well, contrasting styles, but an interesting race. 
There we go. We're watching Paris there. Chasing after Keaton, who is delivering number two. Look at this. This is neck and neck. Two horses at the top of their game. And, of course, Zainab still in it as well. I'll tell you what, Rattus, this is so exciting. My voice is going a little hoarse. Yeah, leave the jokes to me, Dave. Of course, I keep forgetting that. Keaton forging into the lead again. He's always just ahead. And Zainab has snuck back into second. Well, what a comeback from her as Keaton continues his relentless march to five rings. Oh, Dave, don't count your chickies before they pooed. That doesn't even mean anything, Ratters. You've just used poo gratuitously there. But I'm going to count my chickens. I'm going to count everything, cos Keaton has done it. Keaton's the winner. But the question on everyone's lips is, what's he named his horse? I called it uh, Jefferson. <coughs> Nice horse. Wow, congratulations there, Keaton. Superb work. Help yourself to another year sphere. Incredible stuff. There we go. Whoa, Roman! It's a Roman! Oh, I think it's your ad, Rattus. Oh, it must have floated off down the time sewer. So, uh, Tony, what experience do you have of driving? I'm so sorry he calls all Romans Tony. Well, it's all right, it's my name. Oh, lucky guess, Rattus. Sorry, you were saying... Tony. I used to race chariots in the arena until this shipwreck. Now, shipwreck, that is what they used to call chariot crashes. Yes, I know, I know. Well, uh, I'm looking for someone who's a bit less, you know, shipwrecky. Sorry, Tony. Oh, oh well. <laughs> Sorry about it. Leave that here, if you like. Oh, and chuck the ad back in, Dave. Yep, yeah, will do. Not quite so easy to replace your driver as you thought, <laughs> eh, Rattus? Not that I was ever your driver. <laughs> right, round three, and it's over to the gory grid to find out what's up next. It's the incredible Inca. So, four questions as always, and here are your four Inca topics. Myths, instruments, curses and crime. So, Zainab, what's it going to be? Crime, please. Let's hear that question. What was the punishment for insulting the Emperor? Was it being A, thrown off a cliff, B, thrown into a pit of snakes, C, chopped up and fed to guinea pigs? Show me now, please. <laughs> right, Harrison Keaton agree on B. Zainab thinks it's A. What is the answer, please? The answer is A. If you insulted the Emperor, you were thrown off a cliff. Just f for the record, though, I think the Emperor is the greatest. <laughs> Yay, Emperor! Yay, indeed. Well done, Zainab. That is a point for you. Excellent. Paris, which one of those would you like? Um, instruments, please. Instruments. Now, that is a prop question. Prop question. Prop, prop question, question. Prop question. Here we go, then. There is your prop. That is a conch shell. Incan festivals featured musical parades with men playing drums, tambourines, flutes and conches. Ooh, excuse you. What was the Inca conch called? Was it A, a Floridio, B, a Bratuvo, or C, a Pututu? <laughs> <laughs> Show me your answers, please. <laughs> ah, BBC. I love it when that happens. I can tell you that the answer is C, a tutu. <laughs> All right, all right, this isn't an audition for Inca's Got Talent. But if it was, I'd have got on. <laughs> Excellent. Well done, Zainab. That's another point for you. You are steaming a lot. Keaton, let's choose a topic. Can I have a myths, please? The third Inca lord, Yoke Yopunke, was known as the unforgettable left-handed one. Left-handed because he was left-handed, and unforgettable because he was so what? A. Smelly, B. Handsome, C. Ugly. Show me now, please. <laughs> hey, Paris thinks it's B. Keaton and Zane have agreeing with C. What's the answer? The answer is C. He was unforgettably ugly. We're talking llama bottom ugly. Hey, Dave, do you mind if I call you the unforgettable right-handed one? Yes, I do. <laughs> Well, that's a point each there for Keaton and Zainab, and that means with one question to go in this round, Zainab has already won herself a year sphere. Help yourself. OK, Zainab is the winner of that Inca quiz. You're through to play the Inca game. 
Is it just going to be Zainab or is everyone going to join in? Let's find out. It's a single player game, so Zainab, down the time sewer on your own, please. <laughs> the clean way to prepare an Inca mummy is to leave it to dry out up a mountain. But we're going the messy route. It's time to play... I want my mummy! It's your basic royal mummification. Guts out, herbs in, eyes out, shells in. Add the rope, wig and headpiece. Lovely. Well, not that lovely. If you do it within the time limit, there's a year's fear for your trouble. Ready? Three, two, one, go! Right, here goes Zainab, and she's ignored the instructions. She's gone straight for the mummy. Oh, and look at those lovely guts. Oh, lovely's one word for it. In they go. Oh, there's more to come. Oh, crikey. <laughs> well, that's the guts out now, thankfully. Time for the herb, Zainab. Zainab, the herb. Oh, my goodness. She's skipped that step. She's gone straight for the eyeballs. And she's got them. Fast walk there. I like that, Rattus. Very nice. Oh, that's a lovely shimmy. It was indeed. She squeezes the shells into place. Now where's she going to go? Oh, she's skipping ahead again. Look, 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 that's the wig and the headdress. Oh, most male mummies had short black wigs, Rattus. So as well as being dried out corpses, they also looked ridiculous. Yeah, she can't seem to get the wig on at that angle. 30 seconds to play. Does she have enough time here? Oh. That's it, Zainab. Put your back into it. Oh, crikey, it looks like Zainab's just broken his leg. Luckily, he's already in bandages, eh, Rattus? <laughs> oh, Rattus, I cannot watch this. Oh, it's been a very plucky effort, this, from Zainab, but I feel the sands of time are slipping away too quickly, Rattus. Yeah, the rope's not going to save it now. I think we can count this one down. Three, two, one. Well, it was a good effort, Zainab. Could this be a possible new career? I never want to mummify a real person. It's too hard. Judging by this footage, that's probably for the best. Ouch. Oh, bad luck, Zainab. Unfortunately, no year sphere for you this time, but there's still time to win one more. Don't you worry about that. Oh, hello. Looks like you've got another job applicant, Rattus. Oh, yes, I like the look of him. Like a proper chauffeur. Got the right hat and everything. The job's as good as his. <clears throat> so, tell me, what experience have you got? I'm the captain of the Titanic. Oh, dear. And you thought the last bloke was a bit too shipwrecky. Uh, thank you, but I do have a lot of other applicants. I bet you wish you hadn't fired me now. It's going to be a long walk home for you. Go on, Skipper, off you go. <laughs> Time now for the final round, so it's over to the gory grid to find out what we've got. It's the awesome USA. No quiz this time, it's straight to our all-play end game. And that means it's down the time sewer with all of you. <laughs> Did you know that thanks to astronauts, the moon is littered with poo? It's true. The astronauts dumped it to make their spacecraft lighter. It's time to play... Space Race! You are an Apollo 15 astronaut and have to dump your bags of poo, vomit and wee in moon craters, then collect three precious moon rocks, then leg it back to base and raise your flag. Be the first and win the year sphere. Ten. Nine. Hey, this is going to take far too long. Blast off! Here we go, then. And remember, this first lap, they each need to be looking for their coloured crater to drop off the first bag of poo ratters. That's absolutely right. They're all fully loaded at the moment, carrying around that effluent. And there goes the first one. Yep, Keaton is the first to drop off his plops. He's top of the plops, all right. Paris tossing a stinker. Zainab's looking a bit confused. I'm sure that won't last, though. I'm sure that won't last. There goes her second one. It's an excellent start, this, from Keaton. He's forged ahead. Paris matching him plop for plop. Zainab still yet to drop off anything. Both the others have released two number twos. I stand corrected. Keaton's done three. And Zainab's off the mark. Oh, there's a collision, Ooh. Rattus. Oh, that looked nasty. Bumper to bumper. Yeah, luckily the friendly astronaut's on hand to sort it all out. Keaton now grabs his first rock, and there it is, placed in its receptacle. <sighs> oh, but Paris has missed hers. Paris has missed the crater with that poo, and she's going to have to wait for help. 
Keaton's got two rocks on board. The friendly astronaut helps Paris deliver the blue. Zainab's getting in on the act. But frankly, it's all about Keaton here. He just needs one more rock, and then it's just a flag, and he's got that final rock, Rattus. Oh, Dave, they say there's no atmosphere on the moon, but this is electric. It certainly is, and oh, no! Keaton has got himself yeah. snarled up by a crater there, and Paris is round him. Now, Paris needs to get a complete circuit under her belt here, grab that final rock, and then she can maybe hunt Keaton down. Because Keaton is finding this last circuit very, very tricky indeed, and there's another shunt. Well, the insurance claims after this. It's going to be extraordinary to behold. Keaton is there, though. He's out of the vehicle. He's got and, the flag. And he's planted it. Yes. No! Yes. Oh. Well done, everybody. Superb work. Top driving Keaton. Help yourself to another year sphere. Wow. And, Keaton, you were so brilliant in your space race buggy that I've got something else for you. Yes, it's a chauffeur's hat. You're my new driver. Unlucky, Keaton. Talk about a booby prize. You'll find him very rude and very stinky. I know. Awful business. Awful! OK, time to count up those year spheres now. And remember, AD dates are added and BC dates are subtracted. Paris, we start with you. You have naught. Now, that may not be a bad thing. That could be a very good thing, depending on what's going on on the other two podiums. Keaton, let's have a look at your first year sphere, please. 1969 AD. Neil Armstrong is the first man to walk on the moon that year. Let's have a look at number two. 1867 AD, the USA purchased Alaska from Russia that year. Let's have a look at number three. Oh, it's still AD. 1921 this time. Albert Einstein wins the Nobel Prize that year. This is the crucial one. Let's have a look at it. Oh, it's another AD. 1849, the safety pin was invented by Walter Hunt that year. Well, that is a terrific, terrific score, Keaton. I'm not sure it can be beaten, but let's have a look at Zainab's fears anyway. 14 AD. Well, it's a start, but it's a small start. That was the death of Emperor Caesar Augustus. Let's have a look at your second one there, Zainab. Oh, 38,000 BC. Crikey. The earliest cave paintings are from around about that time. Well, that is a comprehensive result, and I can announce that Keaton is today's winner with 7,606 points. Superb work, and you have won an absolutely unbelievable prize, Keaton. Totally unbelievable, actually, because it's something Rattus has dredged up from the time sewer. Yes, it's a Stuart sword salve. A what, what? A cure for sword injury. Well, it looks more like a jar of brains and worms. Correct. Pig's brains and earthworms. A Stuart sword salve. Or a rattus lunch. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. I'm very sorry. And not only that, but I'm afraid you've got to drive rattus home as well. Wahey! <laughs> so, Paris, Zainab, I'm afraid it's time for you to go home. Down through the time sewer. Oh, no. Hey, Keaton, have you got fleas? No. You have now. Come on, let's go. <gasps> oh, yeah! Oh. <laughs> I've been Dave Lamb. He's been Rattus Rattus, as ever. And you've been watching Gory Games. Goodbye. Games. There as well, head over to the CUC website. You can come and join us. How fun would that be? Uh, listen, if you are thinking, do you know what I need is more Zinjo in my life after this? Well, you're in luck because the engineers is on the way next. And remember, you can get involved with everything we do here in CUC HQ. Head over to the CUC Buzz app. You can do stuff like tell us what you're getting up to this summer holidays because I know you're all very busy. Uh, you could, if you wanted, set us a challenge. I like a challenge. You know, set us with something to do and we'll try and pull it off, especially for you. Or you can tell us about the things you're doing for the very first time this summer holidays because I know you've been doing loads of stuff. Uh, this comes right
from chocolate to biscuit bear. It says, I'm going to York for the very first time. I love York. It's a great city. There is cobbled streets.